What's up guys, hope you all are having a great day today. I figured we would go ahead and talk about Halo Infinite here because I have been getting a lot of questions about my thoughts on the overall reveal and what I thought of that very infamous moment in the gameplay reveal. <laughs> Now, personally, I feel like I kind of have a very unique perspective when it comes to this game, at least from what I've seen every other YouTuber kind of talk about when they've talked about this gameplay reveal. Now, I'm just going to get this out of the way. Do I think the graphics could have been a lot better? Absolutely. Is it going to be the deciding factor on whether or not I buy Halo Infinite? Absolutely not. I really don't care that much. Like, graphics to me are nice. As long as the game looks decent, that's good enough. Like, the main thing I buy a video game for is to play it. So, if Halo Infinite's fun to play, I don't really give a shit in all honesty. It's not the end all be all for me. I can enjoy a game even if it's not the most beautiful game I've ever laid eyes on. Like Halo Infinite to me didn't look ugly. The game doesn't look bad. Are there better looking games out there? Absolutely. But not every game has to be the graphical showcase of the century. But anyway, that's beside the point. I don't really want to talk about the graphics too much. You've seen the memes at this point. I think they're funny. Am I still excited for the game? Absolutely. Because the gameplay itself looked good. In all honesty, I think it looks pretty fun. It's got a Destiny vibe to it, which personally, I love Destiny, so, you know, I'm 100% open to that shit, so I know it's probably going to be controversial to say that, but I've kind of always wanted an open world Halo. Like, it's one of those games and universes I felt would work really well in an open world setting, so I'm pretty interested to see what they do with this overall, and just seeing this game, it just made me interested. Like, I genuinely want to play it. I'm looking forward to it, and I'm going to be picking it up on my PC and playing it, which brings me to what I really want to talk about here. Now, this is the first first next generation game you could say that has been shown off for either console because PlayStation up to this point has not really released gameplay for any next generation games and neither has Microsoft. This was like the first instance we've really seen of next generation gameplay if you even want to call it that because this game's been developed for the Xbox One for like the past five years so I wouldn't even call this shit a next gen game but anyway that's beside the point. This is the first gameplay we've seen of what we can expect in terms of the next generation consoles and I think it kind of demonstrate something that I've kind of been warning people on not to buy into the hype immediately because a lot of people were thinking like, oh my god, these new consoles are as powerful as a 2080 Ti, okay? You know, 12 teraflops, 10 teraflops, 69 teraflops, whatever the fuck they were trying to claim. I was saying from the beginning, these consoles would not be coming close to a 2080 Ti. And I think if this gameplay demo demonstrated anything, that's probably going to be the situation here because I don't really know the specs of the PC that the this game was running on because it did come out that it was actually running on PC and not on the Xbox Series X. I'm guessing it's going to be running on like the dev kit equivalent PC or whatever they do. To develop the game, that's typically how it works leading up to launch. The game didn't look that graphically impressive, but I think that's going to be the trend for next generation, just to get back on topic here, because a lot of people are thinking there's going to be this massive leap between this generation and next generation, and I really just don't fucking see it, dude. Like in all honesty, I do not think games are going to look drastically different versus what we already have, and that's just the reality. Technology has not advanced that much. Games are getting diminishing returns for more powerful hardware. We're reaching a point kind of where we're getting to the best graphics feasibly possible within a reasonable price point. Like, maybe if you want to start selling consoles for three grand or something, we could probably really push graphical power, but at this point, man, like, technology is kind of plateauing at the moment. And I really just don't see video games looking drastically better like you would expect with a generational leap. Like, to me, I thought this generation was going to be more prioritizing frame rates and having games play better so you get a better experience. And that would kind of define next gen, but we're seeing kind of the opposite. It's just more of the same. And I think this really shows it because Halo Infinite is running at 4K 60 FPS in an open world setting, which on console, that's basically unheard of. Look at a game like Destiny 2. The game runs at 30 FPS. 
FPS. It's an open world first person shooter. It's really comparable to Halo Infinite in both the art style and kind of the style of game as well. And I think that's pretty impressive, but at the same time, a lot of people don't realize, you know, in order to get a game like this to run at 60 FPS versus 30 FPS, it takes about roughly double the power. So it's obvious they had to prioritize the frame rate and lower some other settings, which to me, that's perfectly fine because on PC, I would make that choice myself, even if the developers didn't do it for me, because I would want the better gameplay experience. But I think console players are kind of missing that point, which that demonstrates an entirely different problem with console gaming. And if you want to see an absolutely hilarious video where some dumbass motherfucker tries to argue that 60 FPS is terrible and 30 FPS is objectively better when it comes to playing video games, I'll link that in the description because that was actually a really funny video. But I think this just overall demonstrates that next generation isn't exactly going to be as next gen as we were hoping it to be. And you should probably take a lot of what Sony and Microsoft are spewing out right now with a massive grain of salt because after all, they are trying to sell you something. They're not in this for the honesty. They're not here to be 100% transparent in exactly what you can expect with these consoles. They want to move units. They want to sell you the future, not necessarily what you're going to get on launch. So I'm just throwing this out here, man. I have never seen a situation where a company or companies for that matter have been sitting on this brand new technology, you know, something that's going to revolutionize their industry. And in this case, let's talk about video games. You know, these consoles are so powerful. They're going to redefine how we play video games, how video games look, how we experience them. If a company was sitting on technology like that, they would be taking every opportunity to show that off as soon as possible. They would be talking about it. They would be telling you about how it's going to change the way you play. And they would be giving you every single opportunity to see that technology in action. And in the lead up to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, we have now seen one gameplay demo three months before launch. Just keep that in mind, okay? Microsoft is the only company that has shown one gameplay demo. We've seen nothing from Sony, and up until this point, we have seen nothing from Microsoft. Does that not ring like a fucking alarm in anyone else's head? Like, if they were sitting on this technology that is gonna change the way we play games, games are gonna look so much better, why aren't they showing this shit off? Why is it, like, pulling teeth to get these motherfuckers to show anything, to tell us anything? Why do we not even know the price of these consoles yet? We're in the midst of, like, a worldwide pandemic. People need to know how much money they need to save up in order to afford these consoles, and neither company is speaking a word. We know less about the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X than I think we have known about any other console this soon before launch. Like, this is absolutely insane to me. These companies are not talking about these consoles for a reason, so I'm just saying, man, okay? If you're in that boat, that you are actually delusional enough to where you think a 2080 Ti, a $1,200 graphics card is going to be the equivalent of a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, you know what? Just go seek mental help. That's going to do it for this video, guys. If you take one thing away from this video, just temper your expectations, all right? But anyway, guys, yeah, like I said, that's the end of this video. Quick little rant. I don't even know how long this video is going to turn out to be. Either way, leave a like on it if you did enjoy me just bullshitting for, what, now eight minutes? Yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video by some chance, smash that like button. I would greatly appreciate it. It helps out the channel a bunch. And with that said, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. And I will catch you guys next time.